Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be walking you through wide area network architecture. A wide area network is a network that connects different local area network. It is a network coverage that extends across cities, states, countries, interconnecting different branches of an organization. There are many enterprise businesses that have their branches distributed over a wide area. For instance, banks usually have their branches distributed in a country or even in a continent or internationally. So a wide area network is a type of network that banks can use to interconnect their branches so that they can have a secure network. So in this video, I will be walking you through the architecture of a wide area network. After watching this video, you'll be able to understand the architecture of both bank network and other enterprises that have their branches distributed in different locations. Okay, let's now take a look at a wide area network architecture. The network topology I have here is a representation of a wide area network architecture. This is a general representation. It is not specific to a bank network or any other enterprises that have their branches distributed over a wide area. So after now, I'm going to show you the specific architecture of bank wide area network and then a campus wide area network. So as you can see here, this architecture has different devices or let me call it components. As you can see, we have an internet source, we have a base transceiver that is base station, then we have different routers. Before I told you that a wide area network interconnects different local area networks. As you can see here, we have up to four different local area networks and we have up to four routers. So we have router one, router two, router three, router four. After that, we have uh, switches, as you can see, this represents switch, switch, and then there's another switch here. So, and as you can see as well, we have uh, end user devices. I'm going to walk you through each of these components one by one. And then after that, I will give you a general overview of how packets move from end user devices through these routers and then to the internet. Okay. Let's get started. Okay, the first component that I'm going to be covering is internet source. As you can see, this cloud symbol is representing an internet source. This internet source represents the internet service provider that is offering service to any enterprises that is having their wide area network. So as an enterprise, you need to get your service from an internet service provider so i have represented the internet service provider's architecture with this cloud symbol so after that we need to move to the next component which is a mpls cloud mpls stands for multi-protocol level switching so it is a packet forwarding technology that is alternative to ip routing it helps in forwarding packets from one router to another. So MPLS is used because it has improved speed and a secure network. So MPLS is very broad. I will do a video on that later. So if you want to learn more about MPLS, you can consider subscribing so that you'll be first to know whenever I upload my video on that. Okay, let's move to the next component. So the next component here is customer edge router. Okay, this can also be referred to as home gateway, but it is usually referred to a home gateway when it is being delivered to a just a home. That is when an internet service is just delivered to a home. But in this case, we are looking at a wide area network. So it is more accurately referred to a customer edge router. So a customer edge router is responsible from forwarding a traffic from a particular LAN to the wide area network and then to the internet. We all know what the function of a router. 
So it's just to forward the traffic coming from all the host devices existing on that specific local area network to the wide area network and then to the internet. Okay, let's move to the next one. The next one is the end user devices. We all know what end user devices are. It could be a laptop, a mobile phone, a printer, anything making use of the internet. Okay, usually a switch is used to provide more ports of which more end user devices can be connected. As you can see here, this laptop is connected directly to this switch. Then this wireless access point is also connected directly to this switch. Okay, now that we have gone through the components of a wide area network, let me show you examples of a wide area network. Okay, the first one here is a bank network. Bank is the most common example of an enterprise business that make use of a wide area network. So that is why I have decided to bring it up first. Just like I mentioned before, this is an internet source. In the previous slide, I joined these two symbol, but in this case, I wanted to separate it because an ISP has access to the internet, that is a connection to the internet. Then they now provide that service to their customers. So I, an ISP will obtain link from the internet and then supply it to their customers. So that is why I decided to separate it to give you a clearer view of it. So I, to deliver a service to their customer, an ISP uses a type of connection called a dedicated line. It is just a kind of point-to-point -point connection between the customer's infrastructure to the ISP's infrastructure. So that is what a dedicated line is. Then once usually this connection is supplied to the headquarters of the customer. In this case is a bank. So if a bank is trying to obtain an internet service, they will do that at their headquarters. In this case, you can see this is the bank's headquarters. So it obtains an internet service from this ISP at their headquarters. So the next thing now is how to extend this service to all of their branches which could be located in another country, continent, or in another state. So usually they use a list line. A list line is a kind of borrowed connection. For instance, this bank may not have the money to buy the hardware needed to extend this service from their branch A to branch B. So they can list a line that is rent a line from another ISP so that they will be paying them monthly, yearly, depending on the agreement. So that is what the concept of this line is. Then another branch, then this, this bank may have another branch residing at another location, maybe in this, another state or country. They can still use this line to extend this service to that branch, or they can run their own infrastructure if they have the resources to do that. So likewise, that is what is happening here. Then a list line is still used to extend this service to another branch, which is called branch C. Then in each of these branches, the bank must have different host devices connected to the router through a switch. As you can see, in this case, we have a laptop, terminal, printer, and the wireless access points. You can distribute this service to as many host devices as you like, depending on how much bandwidth you have obtained from your ISP. So that is the basic overview of a bank's wide area network. So let's move to the next one. Okay, the next one is big schools network. Just like in bank's wide area network, the first thing is an internet source and an ISP. So I have explained this before, so there is no need repeating myself. So the next thing is the customer edge router. Just like before, a customer edge router is a router located at a particular local area network that provides a routing functionality to all the host devices. In this case, I didn't use different switch to distribute to different end host devices. I rather use uh, this symbol. Looking at it, you understand that it could comprise of many 
put devices in a particular enterprise. So this connection is run to the customer edge router that is supplying this particular branch. Then from this branch, which is usually the headquarter of the school, or oh, okay, sorry, a school may not have a headquarter, but the main branch or the main campus, mm -hmm. then the service can be extended to other branch, school branch. For instance, they might have another campus. So the connection is run from the main campus to other sub campus using either a lease line or if the school can get their own infrastructure they can run it to other branches so from this branch to another branch so it's almost the same with what we we'll covered in banks wide area network so there's no need repeating myself again okay so let's now take a look at packet movement in wide area network okay let's take for instance i am making use of this laptop and I'm connected to this internet service provider. Definitely, I'm running an application on this laptop and I will be generating a packet. So, this packet will first of all be forwarded to this router. Usually, whenever you are sending a request, it must be to a destination IP address. Okay, if the destination IP address is existing within this local area network, then the traffic don't need to transverse this LAN. It will go back and locate the particular device that this request is being made. For instance, if I'm trying to communicate with this smartphone here, then I'll send a packet, which is a request. Then it will first of all go to this router. This router will look at this and notice that a destinational IP address is existing within this local area network. So it will forward the packet directly to this PC, smartphone, sorry. It will forward the packet directly to this smartphone and this smartphone will simply reply me. If I requested for a file, it will send it to me. If I requested for anything, it will send it to me. But however, if the destination IP address is not within this local area network, then this router needs to route it to the wide area network. For instance, we know of NAT. I don't want to go deep into network address translation, but this router will help to route this package coming from this PC to the net, this wide area network. Then if the destination host is existing within this wide area network, then the packet will simply move to that particular destination. In this case, I've used this arrow to demonstrate that the packet destination IP address destination host is this smartphone then the packet will be routed to this smartphone it will now send the uh, reply back to the uh, host which is the laptop then however if the destination ip address is not residing within this bank wide area network then the packet will need to transfer that is move away from this wide area network to the internet through the ISP's infrastructure. The ISP is the body that has access to the internet. Another ISP is connected to the internet. So this packet will be able to transfer to internet, move to another wide, move to another ISP's infrastructure, locate the specific uh, host that this request is destined to, and then get the reply, come back and move to the laptop. So that is it for this video. If you have any question, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, if there is any video that you want me to do, please let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and like this video if it was helpful.